you're on. Thank you. Paul's story. Paul's classmates laughed as he awkwardly tried to learn a folk dance in his sixth grade physical education class. What a palsy they mocked, treating him as though he had a disease. Paul had been taunted this way for years due to a disability that affected his motor and cognitive skills. When Paul t tearfully described the incident at home, his parents encouraged him to just ignore the teasing. The next day, a cell phone video of Paul stumbling through the folk dance circulated around school with the caption, Palsy Strikes Again. That night, Paul received several anonymous emails and texts with insults and embarrassing photos from, taken from the video. Ashamed, Paul deleted them and hoped they would stop, but they only multiplied over the next weeks. Paul tried to ignore them, but felt increasingly desperate over time and began to reply with friends and pleas to be left alone. During this time, Paul's parents noticed that he stopped seeing friends and spent all of his time on the computer in his bedroom. They tried to draw him out, but Paul told them nothing was wrong and begged to be left alone. After several months, Paul finally broke down in tears and told his parents about the ongoing harassment. Shocked, they insisted on contacting the school principal, but Paul argued that this would make things worse and begged them to keep quiet. Paul was so distressed that his parents agreed, as long as Paul communicated with them regularly and the situation didn't worsen. The bullying diminished over the rest of the year, but after the summer break, someone created a Fun with Palsy website that included the humili humiliating video and photos from the prior year, crude cartoons, and sexually explicit remarks about Paul, and a link to Paul's school email account. Paul's parents immediately contacted the school principal, who launched an investigation. The principal was unable, however, to identify the perpetrators and indicated that she had no power to shut down the website, which had been created off campus. She also said it would not be possible to change Paul's email address at school. The principal arranged for the school guidance counselor to meet regularly with Paul and indicated that they would monitor the situation over time. very much for uh, reading it aloud for us. And the question that I posed to you before the scenario was to think about what could have been done differently by Paul or the people around him to prevent cyberbullying or intervene effectively when it took place. I'm going to ask you to